I love the current, and it's currently being remodeled. So the story's I'm about to tell you about what's in the lobby. Hopefully when the lobby is, is unveiled in January and they reopen after two years of renovations, hopefully it'll all be the same. We'll see. But the main ghost activity is in here is said to be a young ticket taker. Um, the current opened in 1922. The story I'm about to tell you happened in 1933, a young ticket taker named Hewlett Tarr, T-A-R-R. And he was a ticket taker, a ticket taker and a ticket seller for the Kern back in the day. He was 25 years old, engaged to be married in a couple of days. And at the time, and now, the ticket, the ticket sales windows are just on the lobby on this side. And, and today, like I said, hopefully it'll be the same when it reopens. Um, you go into the lobby. And, and you deal with the ticket people in there. Back in the day, the ticket window was on the outside, so where this poster is right here, that's where, that's where the ticket window was. And on November 29th, 1933, a young thug walked up named Eddie Anderson. And Eddie was doing petty crime all over the place, but he got a girl, and that girl made him uh, it made him want to do things for her. And so he was a young criminal. It's like, how do you get nice things for your girl? You steal them. And he wanted to take her on a nice date to the show that was at the Curran that night. And so what did he do? He didn't think this through too well, because all of a sudden, he just sticks a gun between the bars of the ticket-taking booth. And he said, give me two of your best tickets. Once again, it's like, if you want to catch the young thug who did this, maybe you just wait an hour and see who's sitting in that seat. But no. Um, so he stuck the gun through the bar, but when he did, he, um, somebody bumped him, and the gun accidentally discharged and went right through Hewlett Tarr's heart. And he stumbled back. Uh, witnesses said, he said, I've been shot, and stumbled back and fell down the back stairs of the ticket booth. And by the time he hit the bottom of the stairs, he was dead. It was that instantaneous. And Eddie Anderson um, ran away. Uh, they, they searched two weeks for him, finally caught him after two weeks, sentenced him to, to death. He went to San Quentin, was hanged, and is buried in Boot Hill in San Quentin. And by the way, his girlfriend never showed up for the trial. Uh, Hewlett Tarr's fiance showed up every day of the trial to make sure that, that he got justice. Anyway, Hewlett Tarr is said to live today as a ghost in the lobby of the Curran. And where he's most often seen is in the lobby, um, the, the main doors of the Curran into the lobby are, have been and, and will probably still be today glass. And on the other side of the lobby is a mirror. It's said that when people are walking by late at night, they'll look and they'll see, instead of seeing their reflection, they'll see Hewlett Tarr. But he's not the only ghost in the current. Because the old theater manager brought in a medium. And the medium said that wandering around the theater, here's an interior of the current, there's over 300 ghostly spirits just in and around the current theater. And it makes sense be that in a lot of this, when we're talking about ghosts, we're talking about hotels and also theaters. Because hotels, like people check in, and sometimes they don't check in under the best of circumstances. People die in their hotel rooms. Very occasionally, people are murdered in their hotel rooms. But also in the theater, you've got a bunch of people, maybe sitting up in the, up in the rafters who are just enjoying a good evening out, and maybe we'll kind of just fall asleep, and some may just, you know, pass quietly of a heart attack. People get up and it's like, oh, that guy's still asleep, that's great. They walk out and when one of the ushers comes to like wake them up, sometimes they don't wake up. So 300 ghostly spirits in the current.